Hello my lovelies, Rob here from Kickback Garage and in this video we're going to be talking about the complete spanners manual on Vespa wide frame engines. Grab yourself a coffee, see you after the intro. When I was at the Scooterist Meltdown I met with the author of this, Sticky. And uh, we had a good chin wag about both the um, the manual and uh, the ideas behind it and some other questions as well. But first, I want to talk about the uh, manual itself a little bit. Um, the thing is, if you have only done uh, Vespers, if you're a Vespa person and you haven't been involved in Lambrettas, then, ooh, haven't we got a treat for you? <laughs> Definitely got a treat for you. If you haven't done uh, Lambrettas, then you probably wouldn't have heard about Martin sticking round. Or you probably might have heard of him if you're in the scene, but uh, you probably haven't re read through his books. And uh, his manuals have, uh, is really the, the big reason why um, there's so many Lambrettas out on the road. And that is not a joke. Um, the thing is, uh, when I started out uh, doing uh, Vespers, I was uh, clutching at straws, walking around in the dark. I don't know how you say that in English, but it was a real uh, nightmare. You just have to find out a lot of stuff about yourself, uh, uh, for yourself, because there wasn't a lot of literature out on uh, on the market for Lambrettas. There's the odd, there's the odd bug, but nothing goes into the details and nothing explains it quite the same, uh, in the same manner that. Uh, Sticky manages to do in these manuals of his. When I was uh, down at the Scooterist Meltdown, I uh, wanted to talk to uh, Sticky, give him an interview, and he agreed to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, got a little bit ill, and uh, because I was doing all this meeting and greeting down there, I uh, lost my voice. It was very loud music, and I was shouting all the time. Completely lost my voice by the time uh, I was going to meet meet up with him so what we decided to do is uh, we had a chin mug over a beer and what we decided to do was uh, I was going to send an email with uh, some in what do I think at least and probably you think uh, is some uh, interesting questions about the uh, future of these manuals that he makes but first off I thought we'd have a little look inside and I, I really I sort of want to go quickly through and explain if you've never seen a sticky's manual before you should get really excited because uh, this is a completely different thing to a Haynes manual where you're looking at pictures of small frames while you're trying to restore your PX200. <laughs> it's a life changer and a game changer. Right, let's have a look. I'll give, give you a little bit of flick, a flick through. Obviously, don't want to... The thing is about the uh, manuals, uh, what I like is the index is really good it's uh, really well explained. So if you're just going to go in to do one small job, like the starter, then uh, it gives you a selection of pages here, 45, 158 to 161, and then you go to those pages and it'll show you all about the starter. So I like those. Uh, what I am looking for is, oh, here we go. We've got loads of uh, carburetor settings, different types of carburetors on uh, different types of uh, scooters. Now, uh, yeah, you've got loads and loads of information. Really, really uh, top-notch. This is, this is what we expect from uh, Sticky. And it also gives you... Because if you buy scooters in parts, uh, you might not actually have the gearbox that you, uh, that you think you have. And all the information you need to check that is uh, in the manual here. What I'm going to try and do now is find a typical page like a page that we see in the uh, Lambretta manuals. Uh, yep, yeah, I think we can do this one actually. This is a leak down test. And it's very nice of him to put this information in here. So what I really like about these uh, manuals is the fact that there's they're really, really easy to understand. They're like big writing, 
So even if you just like pretty pictures, you've got no problems uh, reading this. I have a bit. Of, I have had a bit of a read on it because um, I used to want a uh, Vespa GS 160, and uh, the model before 150 is uh, presented in this uh, magazine here or in this uh, book. And uh, I actually had, and I, and I was really confused about it. I had a uh, Vespa. GS 150 and it was a Mach 2 so that the ignition went through the uh, battery and it was a little bit stumped to how I was going to rewire that and now ooh, before me I've got loads of nice tips here which is really really cool so if you've never seen a uh, stickies book before then you can see the pictures and it's really well nicely explained and it has these little boxes. All this is explained in the front of the book. And there's also some info about uh, the author and all the people that he, uh, he got lots of information from uh, to make this book is in the front of the book. We'll have a quick look at that afterwards. But uh, first off, what I want to say is he's got all these nice little boxes. You've got top tip. You can read about that. The top tip of the day. Uh, Leak testing is a wise precaution for every engine build, blah, blah, blah. So they're really handy to know. Uh, and the thing about engines is, and especially my experience at least with uh, Vesper engines, when you're taking out the crankshaft, it's not always as simple as it should be or first will seem. Because when you take out the crankshaft, on some models, the, uh, the, f the uh, bearing follows, comes out the uh, crankcase with the, with the crankshaft or uh, the opposite way and it's supposed to so like in the haze it'll say that when you take out the crankshaft that the uh, bearing will stay in the case and it doesn't and then the opposite way around as well so the nice thing about this is because he's talking he's been talking to so many different people they have got these boxes here where they talk about another way to do things so if uh, if you have a little bit of a mishap and a bearing stays in put where it, when it shouldn't, and the, or uh, vice versa, then uh, he has these little boxes where you can go in there and see uh, what happens. So if you get a bit of a mishap, you've still got lots of uh, information on how to uh, sort ones out. This is really nice as well. It has these boxes here, one to watch. Obviously, when you're doing something, it gives you a heads up if, uh, if there's something that can go wrong with it. So they're really good. And it's got the old top tip. And that is, um, it, it sort of gives you directions of how to do it. And uh, if you get stuck on something, then it might give you uh, um, something that you should watch out for before you start on the operation. So they're really, really nicely laid out. Very easy to, uh, to follow. And uh, yeah, you lucky beggars, all you that have a Vespa wide frame. I'd actually love one myself. I have to say so. I think that uh, I might be standing on some toes here. One of the most beautiful scooters ever made is the uh, Vespa GS. I love those things. I've had one as well. I had a Mark 1, uh, 160, but the uh, 150 is just uh, where it's at really, I reckon. And I haven't really dared tackling those because I don't know too much about them. And I haven't really uh, found any proper resources to, uh, to be able to sort those out apart from the odd German tuner, or if you don't speak German, there's a lot of information on the German scooter forums about these, but uh, yeah, I'm not a German speaker. I only speak English and Norwegian, so I'm a bit stuck. So what I thought I'd do now, give you a, bit, a little bit of a, a flick through. So as you can see, it's laid out this all the way through. So even if you're thick as a plank, you, sh it, you should be able to uh, rebuild an engine. And it gives you a lot of confidence, these books. All the way through, another way, top tip, how to identify stuff, what you should have in your engine. This is another odd one, isn't it? The, um, the special pistons that came on the, the scallop pistons that came on the uh, earlier models. So you should really, if you've, got, if you've got one stuck in the corner of Esper wide frame, then dig it out, get out that engine, buy yourself a stickies manual, and uh, you've got yourself a little hobby going on there. And there's nothing that beats the satisfaction of uh, 
completely rebuild an engine and then riding down the road on it by yourself. It's a great feeling. So what I wanted to do before I uh, talk about the interview that never happened, here we go, here's my favourite, the GS150. But right at the front of this, there you go, <laughs> two, Rob from Sticky, thank you Sticky, very nice. The author that is. And what I wanted to show you is uh, the introduction here. Um, where are you? That's the introduction, blah, blah, blah. Who's the book aimed at? Let's just uh, have a bit of a read. It's not easy to write a book for people with very different skill sets, ranging from new Vespa owners with no knowledge of the inner workings right through to amateur tuners. The only way to prevent the book from being the size of an encyclopedia and needing to explain how to hold a spanner was to assume a basic understanding of mechanical objects. Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's really, it's a nice read. Um, but what I wanted to show you, here we go. This is all the people that have helped him compile this uh, book. And uh, funny enough, nice picture of Alex here on his uh, little Vespa. He, um, he's the lad who uh, gave me all the tips on how to sort out the, uh, or keep the patina on the TV 175 I'm doing now. Great book. Right, so what I thought I'd do now is uh, take you upstairs in my dark lit dungeon and I'll go through the questions that I had with uh, Sticky. Right, we are now in the nerve center where I uh, produce all my videos in front of the computer. And uh, I've got my uh, questions and answers from Stickies here. Now, the reason why I had so many questions is because if you are in the scooter and scene, you will know that uh, the author of the book, he uh, loves small frames, writes small frames. So it's really curious to why he uh, decided to make a wide frame book before anything else. Uh, yeah, so I'm basically just going to read out the questions here and uh, I'll give you the answers that he told me. Not as cool as an interview, obviously, but uh, not too bad either. Hope you find this interesting. So this is my question. Hi, Martin, which is his real name, by the way. It's not living legend. Um, most people who have fo followed your antics will know that you have a lot of love for the Vespa small frame. If I was to take a guess at which workshop manual was going to come out next, uh, after the Spanners Lambretta book, I would have guessed it would have been a book for the Vespa small frame. Or, if you want to sell lots of copies, you could have eased, made it really easy on yourself and uh, made a stickies manual for the large frame uh, Vespas, because that's obviously the most uh, popular one. So that's why I asked him that question. Let's see what he has to say about that, shall we? He says, I set out to do a book only on Vesper engines because that is the bit I find more interesting than the chassis. And the thing is, to be honest, the chassis on a Vesper engine, I have actually restored a few. It's more of a bit of a panel, panel beater's job, to be honest. Uh, the only thing I struggle with, I'd like to find in a book, is the uh, the fork. It's, uh, it's a bit of an odd setup, that is. And uh, yeah, for forks would be nice to uh, know a little bit more about. They, they, they're a little, there's some subtle differences, like the GS160 and the SS180, they look completely, look exactly the same, but they are not. So uh, that's just a question from me, but let's see what he says. I chose to start with the uh, wide frame for a few reasons. Firstly, it was uh, the beginning, Vespa wise, makes sense. Even the very earliest 1948s use the same basic engine layout as the 125 and the 150 motors covered in this book. So that really means that um, if you buy the uh, wide frame uh, engine book, then uh, that covers all the earlier models as well, sort of, sort of almost the same. Secondly, these engines, uh, these were engines that I never worked on. So for me, it meant learning something new, which I, yeah, it's nice to have a good challenge, which is always more refreshing than working on the same old things. I enjoyed learning about the wide frames. 
what makes them special and particularly about their Achilles heels, namely the daft crunch, uh, kick, shot mechan uh, kick <laughs> start mechanism. If you can follow the pro problem solving process of Piaggio's engineers through the various model years as they tried to improve the design. Finally, I chose the wide frames because they were the models that I found good specialist help uh, to make me understand what was involved. I spent almost two weeks with Andreas Nagy because taking photos and discussing parts takes about four times longer than a normal engine rebuild. Similarly, I spent a lot of time with Zinni in uh, Austria at Stuffy's Garage, Ralph Bullock in uh, Switzerland, Gabriele from CC Corsa in Italy and Matt Phillips in the UK. Tons of other people helped, who were also passionate about these models and most importantly, were willing to share their knowledge. Now that is actually a tricky thing because I do know, especially in the UK, they like to uh, keep all this knowledge to themselves. I'm sure there are others who have uh, their own useful tips, but either I don't know how to contact them or they want to keep their knowledge locked away like a maiden in a tower. <laughs> so we've discussed, discussed that already. Right, question number two. I asked him how much time goes into making the workshop manual and <laughs> I've also answered him at the same time because all this information on uh, this question uh, is in front of that book. So go and grab it. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll tell you what he said anyway. Uh, he used two years from the first trip down to see Andreas Nagy to complete in the book. If you are happy to uh, produce a book with all the facts and figures checked, rechecked, then you can do it much faster. But since this is my first step into the West world, I wanted to make sure that it was accurate and as useful as possible. There are things in there like gearing tables, which will help anyone build in a tune wide frame, wide frame to select the best gearbox and primer ratios based on what they expect their engine to perform. All that sort of stuff takes a long time to prepare from, from, uh, prepare from scratch, but Ralph Borlag was very helpful with a lot of the gearbox data, and we had a look at that uh, earlier in the video. Uh, third question, there's only four by the way, so stick with it. <laughs> uh, you did say that you had a lot of help from mechanics, and reading through the Vespa wife frame book, I see there are quite a few alternative ways to remove and fit parts, also discussed earlier. Um, is this due to different mechanics having different methods, or is it alternative methods that have been derived on how stubborn things are to get apart from each other. So this could be interesting. This is what he says. They are, and he comes with some posh words as well, so I might have problems uh, saying these. <laughs> there are some, this is what Sticky says, there are some idiosyncrasies of the wireframe engine that mean they do not go to back together as easily or the same way as they did in the factory. When they were originally built, every part will fit but now things like thicker than standard main oil seals mean that you can build an engine up and not have enough space for the crankshaft. So engine builders have developed solutions to these modern problems. There you go. There's a bit more. I witnessed a few different ways to assemble a crankshaft and main bearings, for instance. Each method has, it pr has its pros and cons. And rather than saying, this is the only way to do it, uh, it made more sense to show all the ways to do it and let people choose uh, how to do it based on the tools they have at hand, which is pretty smart, I reckon. I like that idea. I suppose the most similar thing in other scooters is ignition timing. You can do it with a piston stop method and a degree disc, or obviously the buzz wangle, or you can do it with a dial gauge resting on the piston crown. If done correctly, then all the methods will work, but I think it's better to let the reader choose rather than anyone telling them that there's only one true method or one true good. God, God. Yep. Uh, he's actually obviously put a lot of thought into these uh, questions. And the fourth and last question is from me. You may have already answered this question, but what have you got in the pipeline for future books? And I already know that answer. Uh, but anyway, he says, first step will be update on the uh, Spanners manual for Lambretta. And while I'm on that, if you are a uh, Lambretta man, 
um, and you're missing something out of the uh, Spanner's Workshop Manual, then get yourself on Facebook and uh, go into uh, Sticky's webpage, which is called, I'll put a link down below to it, and uh, if there's something you're missing, stick a suggestion in there. He's asked about this on uh, Facebook only yesterday. So, uh, yeah, don't say that uh, authors don't listen to uh, the end users. So he wants to do that. He's uh, running out of the uh, edition three copies and he says that it makes more sense to update it than just reprinting it, which is, uh, which is fine. And there's always room for some improvement, although I love that book. After that, I'll be looking at doing another Vespa engine book. It's a toss up between the uh, large frame or small frame, really. So I'd be interested to hear what your viewers have to say on the matter. Which one do you think he should do next? That is a good question. Personally, I think uh, I, actually with the uh, Hayes manual, however terrible they are, I think uh, personally I can uh, rebuild the PX engine quite easily. I struggle a little bit on the um, on the small frames, and there's some uh, odd differences as well uh, on the small frame engine. I, I I struggle actually just trying to get those things apart. But uh, yeah. Write a comment down below, which book do you think uh, Sticky should do next after the new revised uh, Lambretta manual? Right, I will love you and leave you, and if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget, give me your thumbs up, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, I was in and looked at the stats uh, just out of curiosity, and 67% of those who watch these videos are not subscribed, which I find very odd, but anyway... I will uh, love you and leave you, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ra!